watching Local News 8 at 6. Local people, local news. Good evening, everyone. After three days of testimony, evidence, and arguments, the trial of Jefferson County Sheriff Blair Olson is in its final hours. Yeah, let's go now to Chelsea Brenzel, who is live in Twin Falls with the latest. Uh, Chelsea, what's going on? Jay Carroll, we are here outside of the Twin Falls County Courthouse, and behind me in this building, the jury of 12 is deliberating. They're looking over everything that they've seen and heard the past few days. And after 5 o'clock today, the prosecution and the defense both ended their closing arguments. And the prosecution spent a lot of time talking about evidence and what the real reason for the case was in their eyes. They're not large, but the violation of the public's trust by the defendant was huge. And that's what this case is about. This case should never have, have made it to this um, court. This is a political fight. After that, the defense came in with their reasoning as to why this trial is even happening. All right. Uh, thank you, Chelsea. Uh, they're deliberating right now. I think we lost Chelsea. All right. But we will update you on the verdict through the night. As we understand it from the 5 o'clock show, closing arguments completed. So it's probably in the jury's hand by now. Jay? Meanwhile, the Idaho Falls Police Department is not releasing any new information on the beating death of Josh Olzak. Police also haven't told us whether they have any suspects or leads. What they are saying is that they're continuing the investigation and are speaking with several people. Olzak died Monday after he was beaten Saturday morning following a road rage incident. Here at Local News 8, we have filed a public re records request for the original police report. Uh, so far, there has been no official response to that, but we will update our website, localnews8.com. And it's time to check out now with First Alert Chief Meteorologist Michael Coates. Mike, a change in the weather coming? Yeah, we're starting to see cooler conditions on the horizon working in here for the weekend. It's going to be a wet, soggy Friday and Saturday, but for tonight and tomorrow, a few scattered thunderstorms, pretty much uh, just a little bit drier than the past couple of days, but still some storms in the neighborhood. We take a live look here to the Pocatello Farm Bureau Cam. We've seen some dark clouds to the south of Pocatello and also to the east of Idaho Falls. We've seen some thunder clouds. There's still some moisture coming out of the Twin Falls area for tonight, and that's going to try to work up. Up into our region later on this evening. I'm tracking some good thunderstorms right now just on the western edge of Teton County, Idaho, with some lightning there just to the west of Tetonia. Then also some scattered thunderstorms coming across Swan Valley, Irwin, and the Palisades. Also been tracking a band of thunderstorms uh, moving out of Montpelier, pushing into the Star Valley there. There's Afton and more storms blowing off into central Wyoming for tonight. There's more moisture where this uh, patch of rain and thunderstorms came from. In fact, we're going to be looking for more of this wet weather for the weekend. Right now, 65 in Blackfoot and 68 Idaho Falls. Carol. All right, thank you. Community leaders in Madison County held a public forum today to discuss the consequences of legalizing marijuana. Local News 8's Chris Nesman joining us now. Chris, marijuana is still illegal in Idaho, but a lot of nearby states have legalized it for at least medical use, maybe even recreational use. Yeah, they have, Carol, and that's one of the reasons why authorities have seen an increase in the use of pot here. The acceptance of marijuana for medical or recreational uses is a fairly new concept, but for many people, they still have a lot of questions. And I've had lots of people say, oh, I wish, um, I, wish I knew more about that. My daughter asked me about that, and I didn't know what to tell her. Those kinds of questions. That's why leaders at the Rexburg City Chamber of Commerce invited Officer Darren Burrell who works for the Clark and Fremont County Juvenile Probation Departments. Burrell says despite the touted benefits for the legalization of pot, there are still consequences from its use. Rates of addiction are going up. Kids that are specifically being treated for marijuana abuse and addiction going up. Um, in the adult population, it's the same thing. And that's frankly related to availability. Other problems stemming from marijuana use include youth brain function. Burrell said recent studies show the IQ of people who use pot regularly drops by eight points. There's a lot of information out there, a lot of emotional information, but I would like to focus more on facts and science and appealing to reason over politics and, and emotion. Now, I do want to emphasize that the meeting today was more focused specifically on recreational use of marijuana. And an interesting t statistic that I did learn today about marijuana use, one in six people under the age of 18 who use marijuana for recreational purposes are likely to become dependent or addicted to it. Reporting live in the studio, I'm Chris Nestor. Thank you, Chris.
Uh, Idaho, Wyoming, and Utah are the only western states that do not allow any form of medical or recreational marijuana use. We've all known about the D.A.R.E. program. It's aimed at keeping kids away from drugs like marijuana and alcohol and teaching them how to make good choices. Today, Bingham County held its annual D.A.R.E. Activities Day, and local news aides Natalie Shaver was there. Natalie, you talked to a lot of the D.A.R.E. graduates. What do they think about this program? Jay, they loved it. Almost every kid I spoke to said that it's so fun. And it's more than just that. The kids learned a lot about staying out of trouble. Um, just don't ever do drugs, smoking, alcohol. It's just super bad for you. How to resist peer pressure. That's what most people think of when you hear about D.A.R.E. And that's right. But it's more than just that. It's just another resource to help them understand, you know, good things can happen when I do things right or bad things can happen when, uh, if I'm going to do something wrong. About the choices you make and how you treat other kids or how, how you treat your parents and things like that. So I asked the kids what to do when you have to make a tough choice. No, um, that's not my thing. That's not my thing. I'll get grounded. No, thank you. I don't need to do that. And um, if you guys want to keep going like that, you can guys keep doing that, but I don't want to do that. And, yeah. Like, I want to stay healthy. Know they're, I know they're bad for you. Just say no, that you've, you've already made the decision that you're not going to do drugs. It's, you, already, you know they're bad for your body, and just, you, you won't, you're not even going to try. You don't want to um, get lung can cancer or cancer. And you just don't want to, if you drink, you don't want to get in a car accident and hurt somebody else, like so many stories. A lot about not doing drugs because that's basically really bad for your body. So you shouldn't, like, you shouldn't drink, you shouldn't smoke because it can give you lung cancer. And if anyone, like, asks you, hey, you want to smoke with me or something, you should always say no because that's bad for your body. Just going to stay out there to the viewers. Remember, you cannot do drugs. Don't do drugs. You will not have a good life. Trust me, it will not have a This was the 20th Dare Day. It's unique to Bingham County. Law enforcement I spoke to say it's their way to give back to the kids. Live in the newsroom, I'm Natalie Shaver. All right, a lot of passionate kids there. Thanks, Natalie. <laughs> Dare has been in Bingham County for 23 years. Well, crimes committed within a home's walls might be information a buyer would like to know before moving in, but sellers in Idaho Falls can often keep their lips sealed about a house's past. Michael Locklear explains the questions buyers should ask and why they might not get many answers. Many homes in the Treasure Valley come with a history, and sometimes they have a past. Were I to learn that there had been a homicide in a house, or maybe somebody had taken their own life, I don't know if it would make me want to move out, but I think it's something I would have been interested in knowing before I bought the house. The Gem State has a disclosure form filled out by the seller, but crimes are not a line item. Typically, you would see something in those notes like furnace replaced in 2006 or a brand new roof or something very, very house related. So, in this particular one, when I went to page four, real estate agent Mira um, Piva saw the seller had written, Home may be haunted. Not like I definitely know the home's haunted, <laughs> just home may be haunted. She called for more information about the old farmhouse in Emmett. She just said, I've heard some things, you know, like weird noises, maybe things dropping or lights going on and off, just some interesting things. Piva says the homeowner offered up the information, but didn't have to. In fact, Idaho law addresses three cases when nobody has to warn a potential buyer. Disease, death, and sexual predator. Let's say this is the house you're considering, a nice red mansion, but a murder-suicide took place here last year, and a sex offender lives next door. What of that should you, the buyer, have the right to know? Idaho law says not a thing. I guess I would want to know if there was a sexual predator in the neighborhood. Yes, yeah. particularly if I had small children. In certain states like California, um, you've got to pretty much disclose everything, <laughs> anything and everything. For example, if someone died on the property in the past three years, not so in Idaho. It would be very difficult for me to raise my family and try and create warm memories knowing a short period of time ago, someone had a tragic end to their life. Haunted houses are a different animal, a gray area outside the scope of the law. And my experience is a lot of sellers actually authorize their agents to disclose those facts. They feel 
the right thing to do is tell buyers. It's always okay to ask questions, and no question is, is unrealistic. Just ask it. If the seller keeps quiet, what can you do? You can Google the address. Just by simply adding the word crime on the back of the address, you'll see that you can find out right away if anything's ever occurred there. I've had clients that actually walk door to door and talk to the neighbors, you know, before they purchase a home. Ask questions and do your research because if you don't, tragedy may have taken up residence and Idaho law will leave you none the wiser. I think that's an eye opener for a lot of people. I think so too. And then and then after you've checked with the neighbors, you think you could still bring in a bunch of people to bless your house. Like it, I would yeah. I'd bring them from many walks of life and religions <laughs> just to be on the safe side. Well, yeah. Not a bad idea. Well, <laughs> The Sugar Salem track and field teams are looking for another big weekend. Coming up a little later in Sportsline, Jeff Landers has a preview to this weekend's state track meet. First alerts Michael Coates in next with a detailed forecast. We'll be right back. Carol Honus, Jay Hildebrand, First Alert Chief Meteorologist Michael Coates, and Jeff Landers with Sportsline. You're watching Local News 8 at 6. Local people, local news. Now, your first alert weather with Chief Meteorologist Michael Coates. Well, after a few crazy days of thunderstorms in the neighborhood, we're seeing just some drier weather for the most part across the Snake River Plain with thunderstorms hanging out into the high country. We could still get a couple storms passing through here for tonight. Let me take you a little bit closer in on First Alert Viper radar. We've got a thunderstorm over Swan Valley right now, also stretching just to the east of Ryrie, right along Highway 26, making its way uh, through Teton County. And this is spreading at a, a southward to northward direction. So we're still seeing most of this wet weather pushing to the north. And this is going to skirt by Ashton and St. Anthony here. It's also going to skirt around Rexburg and Rigby. Idaho Falls, we could still see a couple storms passing through here tonight. A few spotty thunderstorms outside of Jackson. Also, a thunderstorm right now over Afton and the Smoot area of Star Valley pushing off into the mountains east of the Star Valley. We've got more of the wet weather on the way here with this area of low pressure we've been dealing with. It's now making its way across Nevada and Utah for tonight. This is what's been driving our weather for the past couple of days. But I want to take you further out. There's a second low that's going to come down along the coastline by this Saturday and Sunday. And it's going to bring us more rain and some soaking showers right through the heart of your Saturday afternoon with dropping temperatures and quite a bit of wind. So let's go to Vipercast. 10 o'clock tonight, looking at some spotty thunderstorms in the forecast. We go through the overnight hours. Tomorrow morning, gorgeous to get the day started. But by the afternoon, 2, 3 o'clock, thunderstorms start popping in once again here east of the Snake River Plain through western Wyoming. A few spotty thunderstorms in central Idaho. Let me zoom it out to show you that that second low is going to start coming in from the south and start to spin up cloud cover and moisture. This is Friday morning. Already looking to start the day off on Friday with some scattered rain and mostly cloudy conditions. Scattered showers will continue Friday afternoon, and that low gets right over Utah for Saturday, which means we're going to bring in the cloud cover. We're going to get this rain wrapping around that low as we head into Saturday afternoon with highs into the upper 50s and lower 60s for this weekend. For tonight, we're going to have clouds passing through, a few thunderstorms, more clouds tomorrow, windy Friday conditions with that wet and soggy weekend for your Sunday as well. Back into the 40s tonight for lows, highs just shy of 7. Tomorrow, we'll at 68 for Burley, we'll be into the lower 60s for Stanley, lower 70s in Salmon. Dubois are hitting 64 with 65 in Ashton, with 61 in Drake, 67 for Rexburg. Temperatures are still going to be quite warm for this time of the year for tomorrow afternoon, but it, once we get that cloud cover going for tomorrow night into about Friday and Saturday, the temperatures will take a hit in the eight day forecast. Take a look at this. Windy conditions, dropping temperatures Friday, Saturday, highs into the upper 50s, lower 60s. Numbers will begin to pick themselves back up as we head into next week. But about a 20 to 40 percent chance of thunderstorms all throughout next week with a mostly cloudy forecast. Idaho Falls, 60 for Friday, 57 on Saturday. Pocatello also seen the drop in the temperatures here with the lower 60s on Friday and Saturday. We'll see the mid-60s on Sunday for Pocatello. And then spotty showers all throughout next week. Rexburg also bringing in the chance of rain and some strong winds here for Friday and Saturday. Highs around 56 for your Saturday, lower 60s on Sunday. Blackfoot, you're going to be bringing in a wet weekend. Carol, I think your dog's going to be sleeping inside. You know, yeah, probably there you go. Yeah, 62 for Friday, 58 on Saturday. Uh, Jay's dogs also, everybody's looking for rain. <laughs> doesn't matter. I always pick on Carol's dogs just because you uh, know, they're, they're, they're kind of chickens. <laughs> they I, I love Louie, yeah. Uh, Sam, and we're hitting highs here around 64 for Friday, lower 60s on Saturday. Sam, and you're looking at spotty showers all throughout next week. Jackson, you may even see some late night, early morning snow. And this is also especially true for the national parks. It's going to be cold, it's going to be wet this weekend, and windy. Yellowstone and Grand Teton. So if you're going to go into the parks this weekend or if you're going to take your friends and family up there, make sure you're prepared for cold, windy, wet weather. And I always pick on Carol's dogs. If you wonder why, 
it's because your dog, your Labradoodle, Louie, he's the nicest dog. He's just big yeah. and goofy, but he's he so is. scared he is. of yeah. any loud noise yep. that comes through. Yep. Or, or little girls that come running through. <laughs> little girls <laughs> that run a little together. <laughs> they want to braid his hair. Yes. <laughs> Thank All right, you, thanks, Mike. Well, still ahead, the unusually warm weather we've had this spring has also brought a rodent problem that could affect wheat and barley crops. Are you going to prevent the issue after the break? Voles are having their fill of crops in our area. They're little rodents that not only eat the roots of the crops, but the stems and the leaves as well. Local News 8's Dennis Valera joining us from the Pocatello Newsroom. Uh, it seems to be a little bigger problem this year. You got that right, Carol. It's because of the mild, warm winter we had. But there are things out there to help us with our vole problem. A lot of people um, mistakenly think that... Um, they, they mistake the meadow voles for regular house mice and things like that. It's easy to see why, but unlike mice, they're problematic outside of the house, particularly farmlands. Wheat and barley crops in the area have been the most affected. Since voles eat the plant underground as well as above ground, the crop is completely killed. They also like to girdle trees, as you can see here. Lawns are also susceptible. Your lawn may be the only green thing out there, and so they will do a lot more damage to people's lawns that are on the edge of um, more um, wild type areas, more sagebrush grassland type areas. There are a number of red flags that only voles will show. The voles will leave a lot of little small runs across the surface of the, of the grass and little kind of um, grass type tunnels and then have, they will also have an open hole that the vole can go in and out of. Local stores like Cal Ranch carry a number of rodenticides to help get rid of voles, mainly baits. There are also things like a smoke bomb that can help get rid of them. You will have to make sure that the bait is in the, is not just spread out across the surface, but it actually goes into the hole and is underground. It's placed underground. Vole populations rapidly expand once every five years. UI Extension currently calls our problem a minor population explosion. Live in the Pocatello Newsroom, I'm Dennis Valera. Excellent, Dennis. Thank you. Reed Finley says predators like hawks, coyotes, maybe even your dogs could help keep your population down. And your not, dog would be afraid I'm, of I'm not voles. holding my breath. <laughs> <laughs> Louis, no. Okay. I think I have no prayer there. Well, defending their title is on the minds of the Sugar Salem track and field athletes. Jeff Landers has more with the diggers as they prepare for this week's state meet next on Sportsline. And now, Sportsline with Jeff Landers. The Sugar Salem track and field teams are looking to have another banner weekend as the diggers head to the state meet in the Treasure Valley. The Diggers have won three girls' team titles in a row. The boys have won back-to-back -back championships. Diggers head coach Brett Hill tells Sportsline the girls' teams will need some help from the field events, and the boys will probably go down to the proverbial wire just like they did in 2014. He says the Sugar athletes will need to draw on last few years to win another championship. Oh, it's, it's immeasurable um, because there's such a process, a lot of nerves that are involved. And when you've got kids that have already been there, have already done that, the nerve level is a lot lower, and it, when that confidence is exuded from them, it, it carries to all the kids on the team. In 2014, the boys' team won the state championship by winning the very last event. The diggers tell Sportsline they're ready for both the girls' and the boys' titles to be won by the slimmest of margins, and they recognize every single event will count if the girls want their fourth and the boys want their third. Everyone showing up, saying they can do their best and knowing that everyone has a part in this team and we need everyone to do their part for us to win. I know things are going to be close at the state tournament and my points along with many other field events are going to be huge. So I can't only think that my points are just worthless. Like they're definitely so, so important. So I know I need to do it for my team and myself. Well, it helps everyone a lot. That's just, I think that's the biggest factor is us knowing that right now we're ranked number one to win it and that we've won it the past two years. Let's take a look at a few team and individual results from Eastern Idaho who lead the entire state in their events. These numbers are according to athletic.net. The Hillcrest girls lead the sprint medley relay with a time of 143.48. And Pocatello distance runner Elijah Armstrong leads the 1600, that's the mile, and the 3200, the two mile. 
Century's Leo Barron has the highest jump in the state this year in the high jump, six feet, eight inches. Of course, we've seen Big Red dunk a few basketballs this winter. And Blackfoot boys, they have the best time in the boys' sprint medley relay, 334.60. The track and field meets begin Friday in the Treasure Valley. Our Chris Rankle will be there, as well as the baseball and tennis tournaments. Keep it tuned to Sportsline for updates. We'll be right back. Is it usual for it to be this rainy in May? Uh, we've actually picked up more moisture than uh, what we typically see. Yeah. But, I mean, springtime some thunderstorms are pretty typical around here. We've just been in this rut here, getting these good showers. And, I mean, I, I, it's not, I, I'm not, not complaining bad. because, yeah. because I like need free water. Yeah. Yeah. Although, if you're planning outdoor activities, uh, it can be a little bit stressful, especially yeah. if you have a wedding planned outdoors. Yeah. Uh, you're going to definitely need the tent this weekend if you have any mm -hmm. outdoor events planned because we have highs into the 60s for tomorrow. Scattered showers in the forecast. Winds will pick up. Now, temperature-wise, it's not bad, but look for mostly cloudy conditions and rainy weather Friday and Saturday, all day Saturday. Uh, looking to be stormy at this point with temperatures into the upper 50s to lower 60s. It's going to be windy into the next couple of days. Okay, thanks, Michael. Right. That's all the time we have for this newscast. We'll be back at 10. Until then, have a good night.